in scoring. And a TCU team that leads the country in fast break points. The tip is up. Our final tip of the Denver site. Doug Sermons, Larry Scarato, Vlad Foyard to Dahl, your officials here this evening. And this is the area where you'd like Timmy to initiate some offense off that right elbow. Left and right elbow. Rozier Bolt gets the first look. And this is what TCU wants to do. They want to push. It means that they lead the country in fast break points. Emmanuel Miller with the first two. Yes, they do. They have some athletes that can get out and run. And like you said, close to 17, 18 points in transition. Drew Timmy with the soft touch. I love the, the reaction, a little feathery soft touch maybe as he back pedals back. And one of the things Coach Jamie Dixon talked about was in the offseason, they worked on transition offense and fast break offense at any point in his career at TCU. Jr. has been fantastic in three NCAA tournament games coming into tonight, averaging about 14 points per game. Jamie Dixon has been to Sweet 16s, but at Pittsburgh, never done it at his alma mater as a player or as a head coach. Remember, he got to the 2009 Elite Eight as the head coach at Pitt. Phenomenal job back at his alma mater. Strother gets tripped up and, and then laid that ball right on the baseline. Mark Few, seven straight Sweet 16 appearances, the longest active streak coming into tonight. What a phenomenal job he has done with this program. Just a staple in the NCAA tournament. We're going to have to keep our eyes on that Gonzaga middle pick and roll. Remember in our previous game, Creighton made all of the right plays. Nimhart finding the shooters. Miller leaned in just a little bit too much, and the offensive foul to him, his first. Great job by uh -huh. Anton Watson, being able to understand that Miller's not going to pull up, so he beat him to the spot. Guard for Gonzaga, his second year as a sophomore. Out of Seattle, here's a first look for Julian Strother. We got a wedge you. Haven't had one of those at the site yet. I can volunteer to go knock it out off the rim. You can, you I, I can, can, I you can, can still, still do that? I can still jump, man. Even though my abs don't look the same. I, I thought you were a tennis player now. <laughs> you talking about you can jump? <laughs> Miles Jr. Coming off the 26 points that he had in the last game, the first round game against Arizona State. Fantastic. Had to deal with a little bit of a knee injury after coming down from a fantastic dunk. He called it his best of his career. And from the elbow, fades into the hands of Hickman. And it looked like Gonzaga, the Bulldogs, wants to hedge on that pick and roll and not trap Mike Miles Jr. early in the game. Zach start out one for four. Bannon Jr. into the paint, tries the pump and puts it up, his first two. Good job by Chuck O'Bannon Jr. Drove, he used his size and strength. Took his time, was patient, created some space, and knocked down a little mid-range. Jumper. Mentioned he rises up during the NCAA tournament. His average 14 points per game in three games in the tournament versus about seven points per game in the regular season. Timmy gets another touch. That double team cut in, got a piece of it. Good defense that time by TCU. Great job. First, they did a nice job of keeping Timmy from catching it in the paint. Off the block, and then the double team came at the perfect time right when he was going into his move. And we'll see if Damian Ball can get going early in, in the first half. Remember, he struggled in the first round, in the first half. So he was, he was huge to finish the game. Big three from the right corner. All of his points came in the second half. Yeah, all 11 of them. And two clutch three throws, too, with about 34 seconds left. Timmy, body bucket and one. True Timmy fired up. The true Timmy understands angles and beautiful entry pass. Seal this defender and score that and playing through contact. That's huge for the Zags. And yes, Drew Timmy will get all the credit, but Julian Strawler, that was a nice entry pass. They played together for a while. Drew Timmy 
four-year senior, Julian Strother, a junior, played their entire careers at Gonzaga. We had Anton Watson, the third leading scorer as a senior. A lot of consistency between their top three scorers this year. Jacoby Coles has checked in, and it goes off of him last. Get that game-winning bucket against Arizona State. Grew up about 35 to 40 minutes away from campus, from TCU's campus, Texas native, AAU teammate of Mike Miles Jr. Timmy trying to work off of Coles this time. Spits right, another soft touch. He's got all six points. Yeah, he's feeling good. Yeah, just not too deep on that one if you're the defense for TCU. First points. Kicks it over to Micah Peavy. Mouse Jr. calling for that screen. Gives it up. That double team was coming. Amanda Jr., wow. And that was tightly contested. He's got five points. Smitty, you talked about it. Mike Mouse Jr. with the vision to be able to see over the defense. Very yeah. impressive pass. Yeah, Gonzaga on the strong side is having everybody come over. Right way to do, but that pass has to be perfect. Skip passed over and Chuck O'Banna Jr. knocks those down in the tournament. Ball feed and Coles. Nice cut. Oh, by cutting Micah Peavy. And Jacoby Coles with the timing of that assist, too. And Coles is going to get whistled for the foul, trying to defend Drew Timmy. That'll be his first. We will take a timeout. Three point edge for TCU. Seconds left on True TV, Lisa. It's tight. Just like you said, it might be Avery Johnson. Florida Atlantic, very impressive team. I had them in the Conference USA Finals where they beat UAB. Looking at the tournament summary, one person's alma mater fell a little bit short. One person's alma mater is advancing on that graphic. We just got to figure out what's what. Timmy took it hard to the hole, and we got a. A foul call against Anton Watson, his first. Timmy's got all six points here for Gonzaga. And watching this one, how about the winners of our first game, Ryan Kalkbrenner and Creighton. This lotion? Is, he, he must be on the first row. You're 7-1. Can he fit in the stands like normal people? Apparently he can. should be carrying that lotion. His knees are probably up to his chin, but he can, he can make it fit. Shot. What a talent, Mike Miles Jr. That's all three levels and downhill. Loves contacting. Look at Chuck O'Bannon. These guys are bumping. You were talking about Miles putting on some weight and getting in the weight room. That's what happens. You can play through contact. Yes, and he does Big it well. And still nice touch. With a little kiss off the glass. Suleiman Dumbia picks up the first personal. He's not a guy that gets a whole lot of playing time. Averages about four minutes per game. But as we know, TCU a little bit shorthanded at the post position. He might be getting some more playing time against a team like that. The host drew Timmy on the other side. Now two turnovers here for the Zags. Beautiful pass by Timmy. Julius' father was not ready for that one. At the end of shot clocks when TCU get in trouble, or sometimes early here, you'll see that they'll try to get Drew Timmy involved in pick and roll situations. Michael PV taking it inside. Dubia trying to tap it out into the hands of the transfer. Malachi Smith, the transfer from Wright State and Chattanooga, his third school with Gonzaga. He'll take the triple try and trains it. That's why they brought him to Spokane, and that ends a 7 nothing run. Beautiful shot by him. Only two points in the last game versus Grand Canyon on Friday. Average is about eight and a half for the Zags. And one of the things Mark Fuse coach talked about, that he has a very impressive spirit. He's very personable. He's got a positive spirit, rather. He talks a lot. He's very chatty. 
and he said he brings a lot of energy and communication communication to his team. Look at this move to the right spot, good little rhythm three, nice rotation on the ball. Malachi <laughs> Sauce to his neck. I like that over. Mike Miles Jr. to the free throw line. He shoots 74 percent from there. He was 12 of 14 in the first round game against Arizona State. He gets that first one. Watch with around action of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by Nissan and the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. And that's what makes him so dynamic. He can shoot the three. You see the percentages from shooting the three, 36 percent. Doesn't get a lot of wide open. So that number will go up if he got a wide open shot. 49 percent from the field. But he gets to that free throw line. And Drew Timmy getting a breather. Six of the nine points for Timmy. Stra Strother still in and Watson still in. And Lisa, the Zags change a little bit when Timmy goes out because now you have everybody on the court basically that can knock down a three-point shot. That's not the execution that they wanted. Three turnovers for the Zags. Especially Ben Gregg, when he comes in, he's more of a stretch five. You know, he's made 23 threes this year. Watson at 6'8", Ben Gregg stands at 6'10", and Strother's at 6'7". He lost his foot in that one. And Miller stays with it for another two. I love the way he Miller plays. Doesn't stand. Always in constant movement. Oh, he was a pressure. Oh, TCU is impressive. Jackson now attempts the three-point shot. He's only attempted 45 attempts here for the season. Oh. On the break, and Greg wrapped him up. Here comes Watson out to Strother. And Julian Strother takes it all the way, his first two. And the referees are consistent. They, and they're calling fouls on that play. Well, that was a good no call. Yeah, good no call. You can't really look for a foul. You got to go up to finish. Draws the foul against Ben Gray. See Miller trying to draw the foul. He got all ball. Did a nice job. Julian coming right back. Beautiful move. I wouldn't call Julian Strauss. But boy, he, he loves to play the game. He's very sure about what he's doing on the floor. There's no hesitation. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. In Avery, we know the Sweet 16 destination is Las Vegas, which is where Julian Strother is from. And his family watching, I know, from there. Thinking about possibly being able to play in front of his dad, sister, a couple of nephews he was saying yesterday. Out of the game here for TCU. Let's see if they can take advantage. Ben Greg said I had nowhere to go with that pass. He's going to pull me a three. Yeah, that's the difference. Timmy would roll. Greg is going to pop for the most part. So Hunter Rose, hesitation. And the rebound to Hunter Salas. Salas to Strother. Catch, shoots, and fires. Now one for eight from three for Gonzaga. Greg got another piece. He's been pretty good defensively. Cork stays with it. Count the bucket and the foul. Cork doing the right thing. Everybody cutting and slashing as a big. Get right in front of the rim. Catch it, score. Horn Frogs up six. Ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Now it's time we go to Andy Katz with Mark Few. Mark, what must change defensively to get more stops? Uh, I mean, I think we need to do a better job on the glass. We've given up a couple the, uh, 
offensive rebounds to them. Obviously, we talked about getting back on defense. They play with great pace like we do, but we got to settle down down at that end, playing a little bit frantic right now. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Always appreciate the access. You see the plus four rebounding advantage that Mark Few was addressing. His words frantic. I look, and they've got three turnovers. He told us at their practice a couple days ago just about how they uncharacteristically at the beginning of the year turned the ball over, right? And then they, they started to, set, to settle down as the season went on, as well as players kind of understanding what their roles were within this roster. Yeah, the first eight games of the season, they were turnover prone, and they finally got settled in. And when you showed that rebound roster, TCU has two offensive rebounds. The Zags did have zero. And all kinds of energy, too, with deflections, which is something that Jamie Dixon, his TCU team, tracks at every time out. Got a whiteboard that will show the team some of their offensive stats and defensive stats. And a couple of deflections here so far for the Horn Frogs. They put pressure on the ball. They don't give, they don't give up any space. They switch well, and they have active hands everywhere. It throws out extremely well. Smith gets another look. Put back, wow, what about the hang time from Hunter Salas? But Timmy made that play. He tipped the ball to Salas out of the air. That was very impressive. He, he didn't try to grab the rebound in that situation. Nice eye contact between two teammates. Oh, that hang time was impressive, Lisa. He stood up there for a long time. I'm a little jealous <laughs> in watching that. Dubia. Look at Mike Miles. The left-handed pass on the money. When you make those type of passes, you're a fundamentally sound player. And that's what Mike Miles Jr. is. Hunter Dumbia getting some more time. Eddie Lincoln Jr. no longer with the team. He would have been a post option for TCU in the NCAA tournament. Drew Timmy, fake, not there, tries another. Gets another opportunity, shovel pass to Gray. That's not there. Damian Brock. Trouble. Had white jersey surrounding him. Yeah, about eight hands around him. <laughs> yeah, the ball was wide open. Chuck O'Bannon Jr. whistle for his first. Look at that pass. Yeah. Throwing it away from the defense. That's a philosophy on that one. Such a talent, like Miles Jr. Yes, You've known is. him since how long, Avery? Ooh, since he was in sixth grade, playing for the. Texas Titan, there's his mom, Mickey Miles. And uh, Coach Scott Paspickle was his coach on the AAU circuit. It's an outstanding program. Mom's a fixture in the Dallas-Fort Worth area too, right to herself. Yeah, she, she works for uh, Jerry Jones' daughter, Charlotte Jones, and Jason Cohen. Smith gets the jumper. He's got five points off the bench. He's got a nice boost. So six points for Timmy, five for Smith, Malachi Smith. And Ball floats it. Those are his first points. Oh, Damien Ball. When you say a guy plays under control, you're not going to speed him up. Ooh, in trouble. And Miles just ripped it out of his hands. Play made by Emmanuel Miller, though. Whoa, was that nice. And Miller packed the other way. They're trying to reward him. He draws the foul. And it's good when you have another ball handler like Ball kind of crab snake dribbling on that pick and roll. And now the defense by Mike Miles. Get in the weight room, big fella. Ooh, and give him a little shot. <laughs> Mike Miles Jr. plays with a chip on his shoulder, some attitude. And was fighting through that injury as we had talked about after that monstrous dunk in the first half. He was running off of momentum. He had to flex first after he landed on that dunk, but he landed awkwardly and then realized on his truck back that something wasn't right with that right knee that he's been dealing with and missed about five games during the season. Stronger out of the game. Who's going to step up besides Drew Timmy for the Gonzaga Bull Bulldogs? He needs some, some other help on the offensive end. You can't just rely on Timmy. That's, they haven't relied just on Timmy all year. That's why they have the best offense in the country. 
Yeah, they average about 87 points per game. Watson takes it away. He does so many different things for the Zags. And we got Hickman down at midcourt. Emmanuel Miller trying to get back after that turnover. Ran into Hickman. Timeout on the floor. We've got a timeout on the floor. Well, whenever you have a collision and somebody's grabbing their head. And the officials looked at this play with Miller inadvertently running into Hickman and decided there was no extra curricular here to evaluate. And so we play on after this. We're told that Hickman would be okay to re-enter this game. We check in with Andy Katz, who's with Jamie Dixon. Jamie, so far, what has gone to script for you? Uh, ball pressure. We've gotten in the ball. Um, we've gotten to the basket on penetration, and then we've made passes off of it. So, got to continue to do it. We know they're very good offensively, so there's always a spurt coming. Thanks, Jamie. All right, thanks. TCU, you saw on that graphic, they've never won two games in an NCAA tournament. In a second round, they've been 0 for 2. A loss in 1987 and a loss last year to Arizona in overtime. Drew Timmy takes the post feed and that reach in foul by TCU. And you see Nolan Hickman on the bench right now. Andy Katz communicating with the Gonzaga bench over there and was told that he would be okay to come back in. If that's the choice for Mark Few. Block that time on the Bolton offering. We'll head back the other way. You showed Mark Few just a few moments ago. What an incredible run he's had at Gonzaga. At five straight seasons of 30 wins or more. Just an incredible resume. Smart play by Damian. Going out of bounds and threw it off the defender. Retained the possession. He's just a, a heavy IQ player. He's a heavy leader for this TCU team. That was two and your draws another foul. So he'll head back to the line. This will be free throw attempts three and four coming up. Mentioned that he had 12 made free throws on Friday night. Mike Miles Jr. played 37 minutes in, in that big win and didn't have one turn. How about that? His 12 made free throws, by the way, the most in school history for an NCAA tournament game that he got on Friday against Arizona State. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, streaming device, NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. And four of his six points now coming from the free throw line and largest lead of the game right now for TCU. Similar to our last game where Nimhart went to work for Crane. What guard for, for the Bulldogs is going to step up? Timmy, he's got a triple team, doesn't matter. Flex on it, Drew. He's got eight points. Well, we know what Drew Timmy can do inside. Nice balance, footwork. Angles. Yeah, it's a total package down there. What I like also, he can play through traffic with his head up, still able to make passes. Have you gotten invited, um, Avery, to the podcast? Not yet. I'm still waiting for my invitation. I think Andy Katz has been on the Gimme Timmy the Gimme Timmy podcast. Hickman's back in for Gonzaga. And his reward is a check by Miles Jr. And he's seen that blitz defense and has to get rid of it. It's Kobe Coles. Going to challenge Drew Timmy. After a cut, Opanda Jr. beautifully done. They do not stand. Beautiful cut by Opanda Jr. Drew Timmy spins and beats the whole TCU defense. They keep. Tonight is Ken Gonzaga get enough stops consistently against this TCU. This beautiful cross court pass by Mike Miles Jr. Lots of movement from TCU. Nobody's really standing. Mm, beautiful Miles fades away. Just his second field goal. Mom likes it. 
So basically, TCU is using the post as a passer to play basically through their center. Bolton pops up, draws the foul. So you see this movement. When they're entering the ball here in the post, it's not for the post player to score, but to get some of their guards like Mike Miles coming off of dribble handoffs, back cuts. Very impressive offense. Roger Bolton, his fifth year senior, in his third school. Let's check in with Andy. Yeah, one of the reasons they added Bolton, who has played in the Big 12 at Iowa State, was for games like this against Big 12 type teams. I mean, early in the season, they did play Texas, they did play Baylor. And so it was for moments like this against more physical guards that they, they wanted a power five guard to transfer in, and Bolton has done that throughout the course of his career. Started at Penn State, moved over to Iowa State, finishing his career at Gonzaga. Off the hands of Peavy, there's Ball. Goes turns and fires. His first shot, looking for his first points. Bolton from three. Good rebound. Yeah, Watson, I said that he does a little bit of everything. Stroker sinks it. Yeah, this is the guy that's got to get it going. It's coming off of a 28-point performance against Grand Canyon. He's the one guy that can get his own shot. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by GMC. We are professional grade. Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. Sometimes you need guys just to make plays so you can get a second opportunity. Let's watch Anton Watson freeze it right here. Look at the area he covers to go get this offensive rebound. Let's run it. Anton Watson could have stayed right there. No, he comes in, grabs his rebound. He doesn't get the assist. He gets the hockey assist. And then there's Julian Strother knocking down that three. Zags down five, but he need more plays like that. Anton Watson is exactly that, Smitty. And, and his, his team kind of recognizes him as um, the MVP because of all the little things that he does that might not show up on the stat sheet. There's an honorable mention to WCC's honoree, and, and all of Gonzaga was like, what? He was only honorable mention? He deserves more than that. Drew Timmy gets a lot of the headline, Julian Strother as well. It's Watson with the basketball and feeds Timmy. Got a piece that was Baugh, who deflected it away. Good job by Damian Baugh. Ooh, he's in between where he wanted to make the pass <laughs> or drive it all the way. Looked like he had a lob opportunity in that situation. He, he was caught in between. Looked like he caught the lob to himself. Bolton for two. And really in games like this, when you have two teams that or outstanding teams, you have to generate easy baskets. Who can generate baskets on, in transition, offensive rebounds, kick out for threes, set the chance points? It's a big point of emphasis for this game. You got one team in TCU that prides itself playing in the Big 12 conference. And the Zags, who've been a model of consistency. Smith, here comes his eyes. Timmy, over to Paul. He's getting some great point looks. He's going to knock him down. He's 0 for 4 now. And Miles, boy, don't blink because he's going to get you. And he now has 10. Don't retreat because he's going to keep kick, taking up space. Even though he hasn't scored much, Michael Peavy is just playing with, Micah Peavy is playing with a lot more confidence and energy. He didn't even want to attempt the shot in the last game. He's at least looking at the basket, getting involved defensively. He's, he looks like a different player to Bolton again. Still over from three-point territory. That deflection, though, after the miss, they feed him again. Here comes Bolton. They're taking him to two-point territory. And a blocking foul against Micah Peavy. Two on Peavy. Tried to get there. 
be the judge. Today, our game summary, we highlighted the two stars, one on each side, and both Mike Miles Jr., Drew Timmy, are leading their prospective teams in scoring, both of them in double figures. Well, going into that timeout, it was a blocking foul that was called. Oh, look at this, Smitty. What we got? Heel-toe action? All you see is heel is up, heel down, heel up. That is so tough for the referees because on one angle his heels were on the line and then they were up on that angle. That's why I don't want to be a ref. That was a block. Why? Heels at the time was on the ground. <laughs> on the circle. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to call Gene after this game. See. <laughs> Gene's there with Tora. Lose Lose a pace with dinner, Avery. Uh-oh. I know where uh -oh. we're going. That's a, this is going to be a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Offensive foul. That's two on Drew Timmy. More impressive is Damian Baha has gotten caught up with bigs. Three or four times, he draws offensive foul. Look at this guard work against the center, and yes, that's on Timmy hooking him. And, and, and Smitty forces the passer to make a tough pass, especially when he's in front. He's giving him different looks. I don't think Timmy's going to see the court anymore in the first half. What do you think? I don't think so, but let's go, go to two or three more possessions. Advantage on frogs, he might have to come back. Be Zach's basketball is off Miller last. Six turnovers for TCU. Sometimes in situations like this, depends on at what point of the season you're in. Maybe you take a chance and bring him in for one offensive possession, but I don't think so in the NCAA tournament. Round the 32. Just got to stop, so he's going to just play it by ear. Ball pressure by Miller, and then Watson goes right past him. Good job by Watson. So Kobe Coles with his second. Tom Watson averaging all kinds of career highs this year. Points, rebounds, assists. Never has averaged double figures like you see his season averages there. Don't miss the impractical Joker sideline smack talk. Special hosted by Casey Jost and former NFL player Eddie Jackson tonight after NCAA coverage. Zags are giving up some points at the charity strike. Four of eight. Again, Drew Timmy on the bench with the two personal fouls. And he stops and the Zags. He's been seeing, yeah, he's been seeing double teams all night. Yeah, nice job by Ben Gregg to jump out, impact the ball, get the ball out of Miles' hands. Miller for three. Smith with the rebound. Yeah, that's a win for Gonzaga. That's who they want shooting perimeter shots. You got to play the percentages. Watson gets double team, splits it, and the foul. Great job by Julian recognizing that Anton Watson had the size advantage over Damian. Goals, gets out of position, uses his strength, reverse pivot, and the contact. That's three on Coles now. And they're going to immediately sub him out. Michael Piva coming in. Andy Katz, what do you got? Well, keep in mind that TCU is down one big. Center Eddie Lampkin entered the transfer portal last Monday after leaving the team just before the Big 12 tournament. They're 2-2 two and two without him. In a social media post last week that was quickly deleted, Lampkin appeared to accuse head coach Amy Dixon of mistreatment, but Dixon told me earlier this week that it was because of injuries, playing time, and those around the program have told me the same, but we know down one big certainly is a factor in a game like this. Yeah, they're playing definitely a little bit smaller. Remember, Lampkin had his coming out party in this game, the round of 32 against Arizona last year, as Greg picks up his third. And so, you know, we've seen even like an Emmanuel Miller, right, you know, play kind of a small five position sometimes for TCU. The guy that stands at 6'7". 
I'll tell him that. He plays good. He does. He does. TCU in the bonus. He makes the front end. Yeah, Miller shoots 65% from the free throw line. They tried to get him inside a little bit more, get him off the perimeter so that he can attack Ben Gray with penetration. Game is all about momentum. So we'll see who has the momentum going into halftime. You only have two or three possessions left in this half. Zags trying to do it again without their star, Drew Timmy, on the bench. He's got two personal fouls. Strother looking to take the reins. Boy, that ball is hopping. Bossy is something he likes. And Miller picks up the foul. And Tyne Watson is the wrong guy to try to attack on defense. He, he's their best defender. Coming up on the AT&T at the half, scores and highlights, the latest NCAA tournament news. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. What a weekend it has been in the NCAA tournament. Two number one seeds surviving into the Sweet 16 kinds of upsets began in the first couple of games on Thursday. We've had some interesting in March Madness. It's been some March sadness for a lot of top seeds. Ben Gregg has gave some nice minutes while Drew Timmy has been out with five trouble. Well, it's been gladness for Michigan State. Yeah, we're going to New York, MSG. Come on with us, Avery. You coming? Okay, okay. Oh, no. Side. Challenge. Strother with the rebound and a reach in foul. O'Bannon Jr. That's his third. Foul trouble coming in the final few minutes for TCU. And give the Bulldogs credit. They've been playing defense without fouling on that last possession. That's pretty. When you can play defense without fouling, force your opponent to take tough shots and then secure the rebound. That's that spells success. And continued struggles at the free throw line for the Zags. Now six of 12 from the free throw line. Meanwhile, to get you caught up, O'Bannon mentioned he's got three. Coles is on the bench with three. Several players with two. Two point game. Inside a minute, here's Miller. Left it short and he knew it, fouled his own miss. Can't get the second attempt. It looked like TCU is reserved to only having one player on the offensive glass that time and try to get back and transition defense. Zags are all for the last five. Going strong this way, out to good. Greg trying to taste it down. It'll be Frogs basketball. Yeah, that was a deep look from Anton Watson. Now Jamie Dixon will get his best offensive team in. He'll play for the last shot. He'll start this play somewhere inside of eight seconds on the shot clock. That's when they'll start to make their move. Probably in isolation in the middle of the floor for Mike Miles Jr. or some sort of fake pick and roll with a slip just to clear it out for him. Here it is. Slip. Into the three-point shot. He's got a knack for that. Damian Ball, who takes it away, nearly takes it away. And step on the sideline. It'll be TCU basketball. They got a three, forced a turnover, and they might even get another bucket with 1.5 left. And now this is where you run one of your spe cute special plays. This is one of those special, special situations. You look maybe for a lob, the strong side corner, or somebody to set a back pick and free them up at the top of the quick key for a quick jump shot. Michael PV to inbound. Here it is. Yeah, quickly to Miller. Pays. 
Mitty, what you think about that play? Well, I liked it. I yeah. mean, not a lot of time going on for them to do much. And uh, the way the, the defender played it, they had to go, like you said, to the down line. Down, down line. Andy Katz standing by with Mark Few. Well, Mark, you guys were down 10. You're back in this game. How'd you do it? Uh, we started playing better defense, did a better job on the glass, and calmed down at the offensive end. And we make our free throws. It's probably an even game right now. Drew's got two fouls. What do you need from him in the second half? Uh, everything he was doing in the first half. He was finding some holes in their defense. We were finally starting to get the ball to him a little bit. And, and we just got to also get back, get back, get back, and transition. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Drew Timmy still is the team's leading scorer with his 11 points after sitting the final three minutes of the first half. That's the end of the first half. 38 to 33 is your score. We'll send you to the AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. We've got the latest tip of the day here in Denver, Colorado. Time to take a look at the Doug first half stats. Gonzaga's shooting numbers well below their season averages, leading the country in points per game. 33 here at the half, leading the country in field goal percentage at about 53%, and they're shooting 36% for the first half. Let's check in with Andy Katz. Well, I just walked onto the court with Jamie Dixon, and first of all, he's very pleased with their ability to ball pressure Gonzaga. They need to keep attacking. And how about this for a stat, guys? The assistants were screaming out, we've had 20 deflections. The magic number for TCU, Avery and Smitty and Lisa, 43. So they're almost halfway there to begin the second half. And a, a switch up on who we're starting here for TCU. Suleiman Dumbia gets the start. He hasn't started, he starts the second half. He's not in the starting group all season long. Micah Peavy also in to start the second half in for Obama Jr. What do you make of those changes, guys? Well, for sure, it's foul trouble. The guys that have started, you can see three fouls for Chuck Obama Jr. Uh, so I just want to start off a little bit of length. On Drew Timmy. Ooh. Oh, Dumbia on skates a little bit. She did, but look at the look how that V back, peel back by yep. Mike Miles Jr. to, to get another deflection because that was an easy two. And with those three fouls on Chuck O'Bannon, this will give TCU an opportunity that when he comes in, he can provide some bench scoring. Ooh. Stay close out under control and chop your feet. 2.6 left on the shot clock, guys. Goes to Timmy here. Yeah, for sure. Short. It up. And another opportunity. Here's Hickman. And that's why in those situations, you don't want to shoot an air ball. You want the ball to hit the basket so you can have an opportunity to retrieve an offensive rebound. PV, good spin move. That's Watson who again got a piece, deflected it, and Hickman's on the run. Hickman taking it. Good body control for two. Defense into offense. Hickman did a nice job. Push pace. And one of the things with this lineup, it kind of eliminates TCU's playing through the court. They're centers in the in the post, but nice shot by PV. We said he was more aggressive offensively in this game. Dumbia picks up another foul, and he's got three now. So some choices here for Jamie Dixon. We heard Andy's report. No, Eddie Lampkin Jr. not with the team anymore. He's a post player, so there's going to be a, a rotation of post players. We're dealing with a little bit of foul trouble tonight. Drew Timmy has drawn some fouls. Somebody might have to come over and help. Good pass. Hickman hasn't attempted a shot. I think he's going to have to be more aggressive offensively. Timmy, spin the move. Puts it in for two. He's got 13. The move by Drew Timmy. Pump fake, under control, lays that one up. A 
The kick ball will reset. Look at Timmy. Yeah, that's fake. Yep, got him out of position. Nice job. Slow spin. Beat the shot clock. Little pump fake. Finish. <laughs> that was with like <laughs> 0.4 left on the shot clock. Cool, calm, and collected for Gonzaga's all time leading scorer. Miles Jr. with the runner. He has 12. And I, I think that's what Jamie Dixon, TCU's head coach, is looking for more ball movement, player movement. Timmy gets turned away, finds Bolton. They can give it to that shot. And he makes one. 0 for 5 before he dropped that one. You know, true, Timmy is forcing the action. And when everybody comes down, he finds him. Defender comes down to help, and he finds the other guy. His teammate on the weak side or on the strong side. Rozier Bolton is a 40% three-point shooter here for the season. So to go 0 for 5 is really unusual for him. Spin move and nine points now for Emmanuel Miller. It's a play for Bolton to keep the possession as he was falling out of bounds. It looked like with Gonzaga, the ball's going to find Timmy on every possession. He's got to touch it. Yeah, it is. He's drawing so many fouls and also making positive plays. And why not go through a guy that has over 2,000 points in your program who's been in all these games, big moments, and has so much experience? Yeah, and TCU's picked up two quick fouls, so we'll see if the Bulldogs can get in the bonus place offensively back to the free throw line, even though they're not shooting a high percentage from the free throw line. Here it is again. No looks it into the corner. He saw the ball up the whole way. And Paul has now found his shot. Well, it's amazing what happens when, when you get one three-point shot to fall when you've been struggling. Gonzaga's gone now four for its last four. It's coming off the third worst shooting half of the season in the first half for the Zags. Ten to shoot. Peavy makes it fly. Challenging his own miss into the hands of Timmy. Well, point forward, Timmy. Go ahead, Drew Timmy. Finding Hickman works it over to Stronger for three. Gonzaga's go back to back. And has taken a lead for the first time since early in the first half. Drew Timmy is doing it all. Drawing double teams, kicking it out, getting the rebound, pushing the pace. And that's a hockey assist. And Julian with the three. Zags up one. Avery Johnson, time to go AT&T 5G above the rim for one of the best plays of the game. Yeah, nice skip pass by Drew Timmy to Bolton. Got to that deep corner. Miscommunication on the rotations on the backside for TCU. What makes him such a good passer, Smitty? Well, his eyes is always up. Yeah. That's the one thing is, even with traffic and guys reaching down in the post, he keeps his eyes up and he has a great feel for the game and the Zags in a little bit of a zone trying to switch it up. Yeah, a little bit of a 3-2 zone here. The middle is the softest part of this 3-2 zone and the corners. Now with his second half minutes, coming off the bench here in the second half. And Coles is in as well. Alice Jr. comes over for some top three, knocks it down. His first three-point make of the night. Great re relocate by Mike Miles. Kobe Coles had nowhere to go. Look at Timmy. He was working, working down on the block. 15 for Drew Timmy. There's the two players that we highlighted before the game, the two superstars are starting to really pick it up. What this time of year is all about. Coles gets the bucket, his first points. Hero on Friday against Arizona State took the pass from Mike Miles Jr. Hit the floater for the go-ahead bucket to advance to tonight. He's been working 
Hickman off that Timmy screen. Now seven to shoot. Hickman crossover. Spin move. Hickman takes it all the way. And Timmy, we got a, we got a foul there on the floor, waving off the bucket. That's on Peavy. He's got four now. Timmy is a handful trying to box him out and keep him off the offensive glass. Check that. Peavy's got three personals. We will take a timeout. TCU Gonzaga battling. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Well, TCU up against it with some foul trouble, as you see here. One, two, three, four, and with three personal fouls. Drew Timmy, by the way, has drawn eight fouls here tonight, and Andy Katz has more. You know, we talk so much about the stash and the Gimme Timmy podcast and the NIL, but what's happened over the last couple of years is he has really matured into a legit big-time leader. See it in practice. Remember when they went to the Final Four? It was Corey Kispert, Jalen Suggs. Last year was Chet Holmgren. Bigger names, but he has emerged as a legitimate emotional inspiration leader for this program. Which Mark Few will say as we watch Mike Miles. Oh, Drew Timmy got a piece. Got a block and it leads to this. Gonzaga pays it off back on the other end. Wow, the same two guys that we showed on the a visit to TCU back when they were in high school. Timmy got the best of that matchup in transition by blocking Mike Miles Jr. shot him which led to transition basket. We're tied at 50. I mean, he's having a game in this second half. Oh. For Timmy drawing fouls, scoring, and blocking shots. He sat out the last three minutes of the first half with two personal fouls, and he comes down with the rebound. And that was smart to get him out of the game to make sure that he could start this game with a fresh start with those two fouls in the second half. Can't knock down the three. Gonzaga's 5 of 20 from three-point territory. 7 of 13 from the free throw line. The best shooting performance for the best field goal shooting team in the country this year. From the upper, Mike Miles Jr. Efficient. 6 of 9 from the floor to tally his 17. It'll be interesting to see if Gonzaga can generate some more offense from behind the three-point line because TCU in their conference was number two at defending the three-point line. Only 30% from the three. TCU plays in arguably the best conference in the, in the country, the Big 12. Maybe the most physical. Oh, wow. Watson sends it back. And I mean sends it back. Watch Timmy time this one. Come here, Mike Miles Jr. <laughs> yeah, here come Anton Watson on the weak side, and Jamie Dixon was telling Micah Peavy, pump fake, pump fake, pump fake. And if you don't, it's going to be a continuation of a block call. He is in with this one. And they swarm. They close out. They swarm. Oh, count the bucket and the foul. Calm, cool, and collected for Rajir Bolton. I just love his floor game. No expressions. Skirt. Get on balance. Follow through. Step back. Look over at Amy Johnson and say, this is my house. <laughs> Bolton on this shot, that's why they call him Big Shot RA. TCU by three. The Sweet 16 begins Thursday with Nissan NCAA tip off on TBS at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, followed by doubleheaders on CBS and TBS. The last bucket, Mike Miles Jr. has his 10th 20 point game of the year. 22nd of his career. He is a player who has never experienced getting to a Sweet 16. We you know this team was close, losing to Arizona last year. Did the game, lost in overtime. We're gonna really keep our eyes on foul situations. TCU has 14 foul 
Gonzaga hasn't committed a foul this half. Miles Jr. again. Dropping it off to his teammate. Quite sure what the call. Oh, it was a kickball. Kickball, so the shot clock resets to 20. Miles taking it out. Craig sends it back. Here comes Strother. Smith catch, shoots, fires, hits. One point game. And just what you talked about earlier in the first half, Smith is a guy that's played for UT Chattanooga. He has NCAA tournament experience. This is the reason why they why he transferred. Miles Jr. getting wrapped up. That double team coming, forcing a jump ball. He sees double team after double team. And constantly has to learn how to do it. And there's Malachi Smith coming right in, making some noise and some impact. And then also defensively, him and Ben Gregg. That's a nice tie up and double team. And Ben Gregg with a nice big block. Take it out. O'Bannon Jr. spins. Left it short. But he missed Damian Ball in that situation. Damian was clapping his hands. He was calling his name, but maybe O'Bannon didn't see him or hear him. He's on 11 minutes now. Smith. Was looking for a cutting Salas. It'll stay here with nine seconds on the shot clock. Good sub to get Timmy back in the game with nine on the clock. This is TCU pace, though, guys, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say. Uh, but Gonzaga is, I think, advantage right now because of what Avery talked about, the foul trouble. And also, Drew Timmy is drawing fouls after fouls, and they have to double team, but he's making the right play. Fakes the pass. That double team caught him a move. Uh, he turned with his offhand and knocked down the jumper. Mom and dad, Megan and Matt, clapping and cheering that part off. And Smitty, you and I both played against this guy. That's some Kevin McHale type po post offense. It is, and I mean, it's yeah. impressive to go over his right shoulder with a left, yeah. left hand hook. Right hand, left shoulder player. Eight nothing run for the Zags since that Miles three pointer, and they turn TCU over again. Bolton leading the break. Salas. Wrapped up that time by Miller in the air. Here comes Paul. Drew Timmy is there. What do we got? Foul on Bolton. Look like Bolton in transition. Caught ball on the arm from behind. It is on Bolton, his Let's second. Watch this. Eyes up, pump fake. Over. <laughs> The right shoulder. And that's a tough angle because normally you want him to bank it in off the glass, but. But this is impressive as well. Defensively going up without fouling. Vertical. Emmanuel Miller, beautiful. He got some up and down <laughs> basketball. This is beautiful to watch. Couldn't get the bounce. TNT, TBS, you're home for the Stanley Cup playoffs beginning April 18th on TBS. Don't miss a minute of the action. Of course, we're in the building, the defending Stanley Cup champs. Looked like Bolton was holding his right thumb. He's already got it taped up. We'll keep an eye on that. He was whistled for his second personal foul. Smitty so always wanted something to go wrong. He wanted to be your non-shooter again. Bolton crosses it over in the lane. Timmy battling for it. Not going to count back the other way. Waves off the bucket. An offensive foul. 
the Zags fan base do not like this one. Well, let's watch. Yes, that's an easy call. It's Timmy's third. The Zags fans, they don't care. They're, they're looking at the same replay above, and they still disagree. Three fouls on through Timmy. Obviously, Coach Mark Key didn't have a problem with it. Miles Hanks finds Peavy. Gets it back. Oh, Timmy with another rebound. He's got six tonight. Stay Zags basketball. Beautiful pass by Bolton. Anton Watson. Great job of catching it, mm. but couldn't get enough up to be able to finish this one. Man, you talking about on time, on target, in stride. Watch the skip pass here to Bolton for a three. He didn't shoot it. That guy, Emmanuel Miller, throws out <laughs> extremely fast. Drew Timmy. Thought about the three. Oh, he'll take it. The Stags all-time leading scorer has another 20-point game in the NCAA tournament. That's only his third three of the year. Let's take a look at the Capital One rewarding performance. Drew Timmy with another 20-point game in the NCAA tournament and doing a little bit of everything. Distributing the basketball, scoring the basketball, rebounding the basketball, blocking the basketball. He has just been phenomenal. They knocks down this three. You can see that graphic. Seventh player all time with 20 plus points in nine NCAA tournament games. Drew Timmy makes threes, lights out. That really gives him more balance on his game. He becomes more than just a post player. Cross draws the foul on Greg, then Greg. And Timmy sitting this one out. Look at these names. 20 plus points in nine different NCAA tournament games. I mean, Bill Bradley. Richard Hamilton. I, I mean, just legends of Danny the NCAA Manny, tournament. Glenn Rice, Corliss Williamson, those are some champions of the NCAA huge tournament. Huge names. And I played against Danny Manning when he was in college at Kansas. Oh, my goodness. What a headache. I totally agree with you. <laughs> what a nightmare. But that one guy on that list, Glenn Rice, boy, we battled from the state of Michigan, Michigan State, Michigan, but then I got a chance to play with him, and woo, was I relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Your game was an in-conference game. Mine was a bye game. My school needed We needed money. <laughs> At Southern? Yeah, we needed to, we needed to check. <laughs> well, the, the Zags have this building hopping a little bit. Mm, offensive foul. Bolton has picked up his third. Time to take another timeout. One word can change everything. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, now playing in theaters, rated PG-13. Get your tickets now. Looking at this game summary, inside eight minutes left to play. Drew Timmy with his 20 points, matching. Mike Miles Jr. with his 20. That field goal percentage, you know, is creeping up more like Gonzaga-like numbers. Let's check in with Andy Katz. More on Drew Timmy. Well, for those of us that were in Portland last year for the Memphis game, this is deja vu. Memphis second half, they were down 10. Drew Timmy, 20 points, seven boards, and three assists. All in the second half, he finished with 25 and 14. He was 9 for 13 from the field in the second half. He rallied the Zags to that comeback win against Memphis. He's doing the same here this evening in Denver. Well, TCU still has some final words left to say. Damian Ball with another big three-point shot. His second of the night. He's in double figures now. Timmy dropping it off to Strother. Ball 
leading the break. Out to Miller. Miller spin moves by glass for two. Here come the Horn Frogs. Yeah, back to back scores for TCU, one out of the half court, and then in transition. And that's the one thing that Coach Few talked about. Number one, transition defense. The yeah, Horn Frogs, they will not go away. Defensively, they can get stops, they can get deflections, and they can turn defense into offense very quickly. And all of a sudden, Gonzaga has more fouls than TCU. Five fouls to TCU's four. Bulls can't knock down the three-point shot. His first three-point attempt. And Smith falls right into that. There's your answer right back. The Zags have called a timeout. Five-point edge. It's getting good. It's been good. Ernie Johnson, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, Seth Davis have all the highlights and analysis on Inside March Madness presented by Buick. Next, only on TBS. You think that little one will make it to the postgame? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Somebody's giving them a good nap. That's how I, how I sleep at night. It's made sound. You I snore. Can, I think I you can snore. picture that, actually. Avery, that's, Avery. that's TMI. I don't want to know. That should be a good sleeper. <laughs> My point at you for Gonzaga. And it's Salas who commits the foul. He's kind of riding in the back there of Mike Miles Jr. Well, you, you don't stay in front, Avery. And Mike Miles Jr. gets you on his hip. You can't get around. A lot of quick hands in there by the Zags. Poking the ball away as much as TCU talks about deflections. They're a team that likes to get 35 or more deflections. One of the leaders in the backcourt on this team. Nine seconds now to shoot. Easy for three. Strother clears. And right now it looks like from a defensive standpoint, obviously the Bulldogs, they don't want Mike Miles or O'Bannon shooting threes or Damian Ball. They'll probably live with PV taking contested threes. Just playing the percentages. Back from behind. PV got it. Snuck up on Drew Timmy. Great job by Micah PV. Good pass by Julian over the top. And PV coming back and staying with the play and being able to block that shot without fouling. Short shot clock with two left to air ball. Watson was there, tried to get it up. It's a shot clock violation. But as you alluded to it, that was PV because he got the block on Timmy. Short shot clock and the clock expired. And they're trying to get Nolan Hickman going, his teammates. Not feeling good about himself on that shot. Got to let it go and move on to the next play. Nine turnovers for the Zags. Ball kicks it over to PV. Miller this time. Tough shot to get up and over Drew Timmy. talked about it in their last game, TCU. They have a couple of plays in their offensive arsenal where they can clear the side out for Mike Miles to get downhill, especially going to his left hand. A piece of that from the ball. Drew Timmy stays with it. Drew Timmy gets a second effort. Clearing space and staying with it. Inside five minutes. In the front of the rim. Miller battling on the offensive rebound, and Strother picks up his first personal. Miller's hurt. And both Julian and also Emmanuel, they were battling down there before the shot went up. And look at Timmy working. 
a little spot. bit of a hook. Yep. But stay with it. Just throw it up on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Second and third jump. Uh, look at the emotion. And you know one thing about Drew Timmy? He's been that way since high school on the AU circuit. He didn't reincarnate himself when he went to college. He's always played with that passion and tenacity and physicality. And he's unique in so many ways. Most players don't stick around to play, what, 73 weeks of college basketball anymore. Drew Timmy has yet to win it all, is what he calls the holy grail. Still fighting, still hunting for that elusive national championship. I love the way both these teams are competing. Well coached, competitive players. They're leaving it out there. And it converts on the second. 25 and one, and leading with five minutes remaining. Clutch time, if you will. And we're getting down to that point where once we get to that four minute mark, that's the last round or segment. Timmy flips it up, not there. We got five on four here. We got numbers. TCU, cross breaking it. And Miller finishing it. He's got 14. With Peavy at the five. Yes, they're small, but he's doing a nice job. If they get a stop or a rebound, advantage frogs. Here's the duck in by Timmy. Timmy pump fed. Yeah, when you're in that situation, you almost need to try to slip in front. When you're behind Timmy in this situation, it's ball game. Nice move by the big fella. Taking a look at your game reset, we head down to the, the final few minutes of this one. We just want to say thank you to some people on our crew, Associate Director Sean Meehan, Broadcast Associates, Keon Grissom and Tyler Makins, our statistician, Gene Skidmore, who was sat next to us at the broadcast table, feeding us stats all weekend long, producer Burt Bondi and our director, Matt Lib, and, and so many others, and too many names to, to mention, but six games together, tons of hours together, and tons of fun together this weekend in Denver. All Smitty and I can say, and Lisa, thank you, thank you, thank you, crew. You make us look good. Done an excellent job of providing us, putting us in a place to be successful in these games. It definitely helped. They've been fantastic. Three and a half left to play here between TCU and Gonzaga. Miller Jr. And Miller with the foul, his third. You know, normally TCU is a really good offensive rebounding team and you know, they only have eight tonight. And digest this, guys. Mike Miles Jr., remember that last field goal was that big three-pointer, right? It was at 12 minutes and 14 seconds. He's only taken one shot since. As it scored since. And we, we saw in the break there a couple of situations where the Jag is really just trying to get the ball out of his hands and force somebody else to score. And nice, he, nice job by Mike on that situation. That's his first points since that 12-14 mark in the second half. Right on cue for Mike Miles Jr. And in this situation, he's probably got to be a, even more selfish. Just got to be aggressive. Aggressive, yep. Yeah. Mm -mm. Aggressive to score. Watson holding that that left calf, maybe. Wow, when he came down, you it didn't look like anything was wrong with it. He's walking pretty good. So hopefully it's his cramps. That's what happens when you're young, Smitty. You can bounce back pretty quickly. <laughs> I don't know how many times we've heard the word altitude 
<laughs> since we've been here this weekend, but a very real thing. Got to stay hydrated. And uh, Watson will move towards the end of the bench. The athletic training staff still tending to him, and he is hydrating himself. His electrolytes back in his body. Malcolm Smith forced to call the timeout. Gonzaga's is left with one. Still working on Watson. These two still working on a spot maybe in the Sweet 16. The Gonzaga Bulldogs are doing a nice job. See this trap on Mike Mouse? They're forcing him to give the ball up. Look, now he's retreating towards half court. They're forcing other players to score. Nice strip. You got to give the Bulldogs credit. That was a logo attempt. Yes, it was. TCU pushing pace. Here comes up against Tate. The tip is good. Athletic move from Micah Peavy. We're going to put on a little pressure right now. A little 2 1 2. And if you're TCU, no cheap fouls here. Good job by Micah Peavy coming in and getting a nice tip and the pressure bothered the Zags on this play. And that was a great call by the referees over and back. Ten turnovers for the Zags. Mike Miles Jr. have to lead that double team. Trying to split it. Miles Jr. does exactly that, but gets tripped up. Will he stay here? Beat the trap that time, but they couldn't come up with the ball. Damian Ball, five seconds on the clock. Yep, four to shoot. Ball kicks it in. Finger roll finish. It's a three-point game. Ball has 12. And here's the CCU three-quarter court pressure against Minnie. Yes. One possession game. Still two minutes left. It's the return. Both teams with one timeout. To get a good shot here. This ball's got to find Timmy. It does. He turns off the glass for two. Drew Timmy with 27. And Bolton commits the foul. Oh, you see Miller trying to work. Great hook right there, <laughs> got away with a little one. Uh, Drew Timmy still being able to play aggressive. Referee right there. You said that was a little hook? Well, he got a little chicken wing. <laughs> a little chicken wing. Both teams now in the bonus. And a huge miss on the front end. He's missing free throws today, he's 0 for 3. Yeah, and TCU as a team is 10 of 18 from the free throw line. And no team has struggled from the free throw line tonight. Ooh, the pressure right now. Yeah, Strother gets tied up. Oh, they called the foul on PV. And he's done. If it is on PV, it is. Micah PV has piled out. So in that situation, they're calling, what happened first? Was it the travel or the foul? Well, let's first see. Mm, yep. Yep. Grabbed him with the right hand. He did. Yep. Which caused the travel. Yep. yep. Good call. Good call. You know what? And there were two, there was communication. You see Doug Sermons down at the bottom of your screen. He was about to call the travel. He stopped and he looked at Larry Scarato. They communicated and got the call right. They did because of that angle. Larry had a better angle to be able to see the grab. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want referees just to get it right. So Peavy's going to have to have that seat for the final one minute and 14 seconds. Two possession game. Try to get the best shot here, even if it's a two or a three. Okay, 
Into the hands of Watson. And they foul and stop the clock with one minute and a second left. It just seems like the Bulldogs have gotten every loose ball. Yeah, they have. I mean, they've done an excellent job. They commit to two on the ball on those pick and rolls. And the shot they're giving up is the corner shot. Chuck O'Bannon has got a, a few of them. He's one for seven. Showing up in the steals. The Zags they have six steals tonight. And Watson is a 57% free throw shooter. And calmly sinks the first. Splits the pair. One Inside a minute, seven point game. The right to get to Vegas to play UCLA, the number two seed. Calls for three. Could he be a hero back to back? That's a big bucket to cut the lead to four. Yes, indeed. Slip screen, Chuck O'Bannon Jr. Foul, foul, finds him. Look at the follow through from Coles. TCU now out of timeouts. Gonzaga sitting on one left. You see the 18 fouls for each of these teams, and the possession arrow is always big, right, Avery? It's big because here, in this situation, you can trap without fouling, maybe try to tie up Gonzaga and get a jump ball since you have the possession arrow in your favor with TCU. Michael Run PV's already ball. fouled out. We've been tracking this all game long. In fact, TCU has done a good job in only having one person foul out. The way things were trending, it was not looking good in that category for the Horned Frogs. Oh, definitely going small right now, TCU. With Emmanuel Miller as the five, checking Timmy. And we've seen how situations like this played out again with Virginia. They didn't make a really good decision. But their press offense and threw the ball away. Rondell Walker bodies up for his second personal. It's the ninth team foul for TCU, so the next foul will be in the double bonus for Gonzaga. Zags are 11 of 19 from the foul line as a team. And you see what Bolton has done tonight. Big free throws. Bolton, a senior, steps up. Calm and cool and collective. If you're Gonzaga, you want to switch all pick and rolls. Switch. And they're still trapping the Knox Jr. Here comes Timmy. Already called the foul to stop the clock against Coles, and that's his fifth. That's his fourth. One of the things um, Mark Few talked about with Timmy that he stepped up his leadership this year. So how they He's played with a lot of players, really good players that's in the NBA. To me, a 64% free throw shooter. Still a two possession game. Jump ball. We are talking about that possession arrow heads TCU's way. A quick score right now. You can still get a steal. And another play. Still 23.4 left. There's about two or three possessions still left. This is for O'Bannon to come off. A little confusion here. 
problem. Open and the pump fake side step three. Can't knock it down. Ball tipped away. It'll still stay here. They're going to review it. They can't. So the officials will go to the monitor to look at the possession of this. Zags ball. Yeah, it looked like it went went off of Mike Miles Jr. left leg or left knee right here. And his forearm. And his right, and his forearm. Yeah. So from our angle, it looks like that should be overturned. Yeah, this should be a very quick review. Doug Sermons, Larry Scarado. Look at the scoring in the second half. 47 to 35. And the 47 is much more like good Zaga basketball within the country here in scoring. I think stands out for me is that one stat we talked about TCU leads the nation in fast break points, but it's 19 to 7, the Zags. It's a great point. Great point. Smitty makes a great point every now and then, right, Lisa? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> give that one to him. He just gave me an elbow. They did overturn the call. They <laughs> overturned it to Gonzaga basketball. And TCU will be forced to foul, and two free throws coming for Gonzaga with every foul in the double bonus. Stormer tosses it away. Picks it off and draws the foul. What a mistake. Yes, indeed. It's the worst case possible scenario to turn it over and stop the clock and for Gonzaga. And that's the worst kind of pass in that situation. You don't need a bounce pass. No, not at all. When you have Watson, who's 680, who can jump out of the gym, throw it up. There's no quitting TCU, they're still playing. They're gonna press again. Twenty-four points for Miles Jr. It'll be interesting if they decide to put somebody on the ball or try to play five against four, but they're gonna put Damian Ball on the ball, on the inbound. Strother again to take it out. And again, the bounce pass here to Bolton. Some time took it away. Over to Salas. Exclamation point. The dunk was sweet for the Zags. Three-pointer from the corner, Rondell Walker. Four-point game. Salas again. Stop the clock. Seven tenths. Zags can try to savor this one and heartbreak once again for Mike Miles Jr. What a game. And you got to say, Gonzaga, the Bulldogs are a well oiled machine offensively. Gonzaga. Familiar territory. The Zags make it eight straight. Sweet 16s.